All right, guys, welcome to the podcast. The podcast is sponsored by Onyx Hair Crew. We're all about sponsoring small businesses. Check out our website at www.onyxhaircrew.com.au. So I'm going to start the intro. Let's go. Welcome to Onyx Raw Podcast, where we share stories of inspiring people. Stories from their journey on YouTube, Polytube, local businesses, and much more. They share tips and tricks to help you be successful. And you hear it first here on Onyx Raw. All right, guys, how are you? Good, good. That was um, that was one hell of um, an intro. I know it's like bam. <laughs> and, 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 and actually, I actually thought I was um on CNN. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's good to know your family. Welcome to Onyx Raw, where we share stories with inspiring swingers and solers about their journey on YouTube, Polytube, social media, business, or life. Um, my name is Duva. I'm here with my partner in crime, Miss Beast. And we are the Tinani family. Hey! Hey, guys. So today on The Journal, we're here today with a very, very special person to my heart. How are you? I'm, I've been really good, thanks, Bees, despite, you know, working conditions from home. But, yeah, no, I've been pretty good. You know, God is good. Yeah, that's cool. That's what you say all the time. <laughs> all the time. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> do you know the Samoan legend about the malu? Yeah, I do, actually. Um, it was a story about two goddesses. Okay, let me, I'm taking it back a bit. I think um, Tema and Tila Fenga. Um, the two goddesses. So they actually um, swam across the oceans to Fiji, I guess, to learn more ancient knowledge about our, our Tato. Yeah. It really was Tato that was given by women for women only along the way as they made their way back to Valealupo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the story kind of like got twisted and it became known that the Tato was actually for men. So that way we have the men that have the better. But the Malu was still tradition to many of our our, our females, Samoan females, a major part of our, our culture. So mm, yeah, that's, in a, that's quite interesting, hey, that it was uh, women that had it first and then they, you yeah. know, the seas and then the stories got twisted and then it became mm. the men. When did you sit for your malu? It was July 2019. I started to uh, make the journey. Oh, I travelled to Brisbane um, to get it done. I promised to up there or actually felt my natal. Suluape. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Cool. Awesome. Now, yeah. Kaz, just explain to our viewers because a lot of us tend to think that having the muddle done is just like having a tattoo done. And I think those that have been pleasured that have had the muddle, can you explain to the viewers the difference? Yeah. And um, what is the muddle? I guess the, the journey of the muddle or even the better um, from a male's perspective is somewhat very different to just a normal tattoo. My journey has been really, really different. I'm a seven-day Adventist. Um, yes. and, and it's not something that we, we practice as part of our religion. Mm-hmm. The journey for me was basically to really understand uh, the true meaning of the malu. At a really early age, I, I've always wanted to get the malu. And for the mere fact that it was trendy, it was cool, mm-hmm. everything other than of what the malu is. It wasn't until I got older and I started looking into it, you know, listening to different stories from other people, the true value of what the malu is. And, you know, I, I know, Bez, you, you actually had a, a documentary not long ago, a vlog, where mm-hmm. you um, spoke on the importance of the malu, you know. And, you know, for a Samoan woman to wear this, this is a part of our heritage. It's a part yeah. of who we are. It identifies us as a Samoan. But it's not just a Samoan. It's a Samoan that tr- carries our traditions, that go cause to the Ainga, you know. There's so right. many aspects of the role that comes into place where this identity in proper terminology, the la e. So I think different people have different perspectives on how they look at the malu. But, yeah, that's basically how I, I view malu itself. So it's, it's, to me, it's not just a normal tattoo. I've got other tattoos on me that 
I've got an in remembrance of Bali trips and, and stuff yeah, like no, that. Yeah. Right? Malu is my prized possession. It's the most proudest moment of my life. Yeah. It's allowed me to embrace my culture. It's allowed me to accept the responsibilities and the, the, the roles that come with wearing the slate. Yeah, cool. It's beautiful. Cool. Just to add to that question, cuz can you explain the preparation of your journey in the beginning? What was your mindset? Uh, what living in the Western world compared to yeah. Samoa? You know, can you explain to our viewers what was that mindset yeah. for you? So, I guess my preparation, my original plan was to actually travel to Samoa and get yeah. it done. I wanted to be done back home in Samoa. I wanted to experience the full Samoa yeah. and get yeah. it all done. You know, things didn't kind of like work that way. So leading up to it, I actually got onto Instagram and sought out, you know, the Suluape family because in my mind from an early age, I, I didn't want anyone else to do it but the Suluape family. Yeah. You know, I believe they hold, you know, great value. It's an art that they own and they are so good at. I guess the preparation that I had, I had to really kind of like sort out deep within. I had so many different responsibilities. I mentioned on Sim Ventus roles within the church so it was that whole battle of going what I know and what I believe religion wise to what I love and the pride that I carry in my culture I guess it was trying to combine the two and making it work for my value or for my worth and really understanding and trying to embrace the two together so yeah. I struggled with it you both know dad he's, he's a staunch Sam day Adventist and <laughs> you know, at first he was like no you know I don't want you to get it you know I was said, you know, you know, salingile, you know, koko and, and yeah, like, yeah. Um, my father to see that this was something that I really needed to do. Mm -hmm. I knew in my heart I couldn't do it without his blessing. So he, you know, he basically said, um, I'm giving you my blessing. But I'm not giving it because I condone what you're doing. I'm giving it to you so that even leading up to, you know, the final hours or even the night before, actually met with Michael Funga in a quick discussion and try to really embrace the moment. Um, it was such an emotional moment for me um, and for my family. The process was just real spiritual and it was just really beautiful. It's something I'll do again in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Also to add to that, guys, my understanding is that there's always two. So can you explain to our viewers why there's always two, what it's called, and who was your number two? Oh, Okay. I'm pretty sure this is right. Um, so the second person or someone that, you know, sits with you is called a soa. Yeah. Now, I think it's just in regards to the two goddesses in the beginning. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah true. Um, so, yeah, you know, nowadays people are going their models and their on their own, mm. um, each to their own, but the proper, more traditional way is to have a soa. A soa was uh, my niece, Angel, Angel yeah. Stowers, uh, from Brisbane. So it's uh, my cousin Morris's daughter. Cool, cool. It's interesting. Yeah, it is it? interesting. Yeah. I just want to read something that we found on the net there, Kaz, and it's the meaning of the word malu. And the word yep. malu means protector, shelter, security. Malu also means house. Yep. The woman is therefore seen in Samoan culture as the protector and the shelter of her children the family and the village, and she is the giver of bloodlines. When we read that, mm. it makes so much sense, doesn't it? Because not that the fathers don't, but the mothers, mm. we have a big responsibility in our, in our families as well. And in our culture, I, I actually always thought it was the other way around. Mm. Um, mm. But when I read that, I, th I thought to myself, we've got to put that in, Dubs, because I think it's just really, really mm. interesting. Now, cuz I know there are some set rules that apply when you're preparing for your malu. Sis, can you just explain, just in simple form, like some of those rules that apply to getting your malu? Are there certain things we can do? Are there certain things that we can't do? Yeah, well, obviously, as much as it's a part of our culture, it's also a spiritual moment. There are rules which are known in the Fasamo as Gula Formos. Yeah. And I think it's more stricter with the boys. So I know with a lot of the guys, you know, you can't sleep with your partner. You mm. would sleep on the floor. 
um, you go to the, the restrooms or, you know, you go in twos, you know, you've got to leave the door open, things like that. It's a real spiritual moment in that aspect, I guess. With the malu, it's not highly as strict. There are things that you need to do. So obviously with my sitting, we still had to, you know, everyone that, that, that came in or came into view or came into kapwa'i or support, they had to sulu a ear, could never sit in the same line as the kufunga, you know, who always had his back towards the... It was just a real spiritual moment. Those are some of the, yeah, I guess, kula funnels that they had for... Thanks, guys. Now, I want to talk about the pain. Now, is the pain different from having a malu? to having a normal tattoo, say, for instance, in Bali? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, look, the pain is, um, you know, I, I often get asked by different people, um, hey, Jules, give us a, a scale on 1 to 10 of what yeah. the pain is. And without a doubt, my, my answer was 15. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Off scale. I mean, it's like, it's a pain that's a uh, yeah. different kind of pain. But the journey that you're on, doing these for the right reason, yeah. you know, the pain, and hurting me right now it's, it doesn't compare to a normal tattoo you know you get a needle you get the gun the machine and you know you get a normal tattoo these guys man they're just like tap 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 and it's yeah, yeah. digging at your skin you know it's picking at your skin um but at, at, a, at a speed of like a hundred kilometers you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> these guys are just really skilled at the art that they do yeah no absolutely like i think the first half an hour you feel the pain after that it's just not and i think you're just in that state of mind where you're just at peace now and you're just embracing, encountering every pain. And, and that's the beauty of the process is to yeah, yeah. And, and experience the pain. Yeah. And I love it because it's it's tradition that's passed down from our generations, mm. um, yeah, from, our parents, absolutely. from their parents and now to us. And living in different countries and places yeah. where mm. a culture is different, but we mm. still can uphold our culture. And being in that moment of being tapped in, is you've got to be connected. Mm. You think yeah. of your parents, you think of your grandparents, you think of what they went through, mm. their journey of bringing us here to be the next generation of Samoans. ACES. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the only thing I can say is um, you really need to understand the whole process. Yeah. Um, a lot of people that, that are getting it outside our, our own nationality or outside mm. our own, do you know what I mean? Wow. I often get asked, you know, what are your views on, say, a palangi getting it? There's a Samoan saying that says, you know, le you know, yeah. if you don't yeah. understand what you're talking about as far as what's on your body, That's then right. that, you know, it's so it's the whole process of really understanding why you're getting this um, yeah. for the right reasons. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Gone from pain and to your journey on it. How long did the process take? So for me, it took uh, four hours and 50 minutes for the complete process for me to be up and, you know, hug the kufuga and that. Yes, uh, just under five hours. Wow. So okay. I take my hat off to those girls, apparently get it in three or four hours. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was uh, just under five hours for me. And did those hours just fly for you, Cass? Did it just fly by? So my first leg, my left leg, went for two and a half, uh, two and a half hours and I felt like that two and a half hours was actually two and a half weeks. Oh, <laughs> shit. It was just, I feel like it just, years. yeah. <laughs> I was like, the longest journey. <laughs> I don't know if he was, um, he was having troubles getting around the thighs or what, you know. <laughs> but um, then it, um, when I got to the right leg, it, it just breezed right through and it went so quickly. Mm. Um, so I believe that when, when sitting for your malu, there's a Samoan tradition that happens. Uh, with family sitting around singing and supporting you. Now, let me take you back a few, actually, quite a few years, probably a good 10, 12 years, mm -hmm. uh, when we all went over for day sound, we all got our gold members done. You yeah. know, and I remember, yeah. do you remember our families and our parents chanting the song? I just wanted yeah. to tell them to, because I couldn't handle the pain. Yeah. But did you have a lot of that support going on, Kaz? Yeah. Look, it's um, it's definitely as much as people say it's your your journey getting your malu. It's it's not only our journey on our own. It's our families. That's you right. Know, they embrace that moment and yeah. embrace the pain that we're going through at the time as well. So, um, everything outside, and all you can hear is just the, the singing. Um, yeah. I'd like to say beautiful, but 
you were beautiful at the time. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely the support of your family during the process. Absolutely. When you look around today with those that have had their mullals done, every mullal seems to have its own different identity, mm. its own different pattern. How did you choose what you wanted? Did you choose it or was it given to you? Or did you have someone that helped you design and put mm. all these probably, you know, quite interesting. That I don't is. know how they mm. do it because maybe they want to go back to your heritage or the villages that you come from mm. and yes. they put it all down to one um, pattern. How do they determine that, that style for yeah. you? My biggest fear of getting my model was, oh, my gosh, I'm just going to get on it. Um, so I actually wanted to design my own model. Every kufunga, that is their art. So for me, I left it in the hands of my kufunga. Like I said, I met with my kufunga before and I, you know, asked how it worked. And he basically just, you know, asked where my mother is and, you know, where I'm from. And then I just left it to him. The mother obviously tells a story of where you come from. You mm. know, your, your, not only your heritage, your culture, your family, everything's identified in your, in your piece. Wow. Um, I didn't have anything to do with my design like that it was solely the kufungas and i put all my faith into my kufunga and he wow. did an amazing job. I'm, I'm i'm so happy with um with what i had um, but i would have even embraced you know whatever whatever i was given every morning i you know when i have a shower and i look down I, it reminds me of who i am and where i've come from so. yeah as you have explained it's such a spiritual experience has this influence the way that you live now and the way that you think yeah, oh, definitely, 100%. You know, my outlook on my Samoan culture mm. has gone from like 100%. You know, it's gone from being a proud, you know, yeah, I'm Guam, I'm Samoan, you know, 100%, yeah. 685 or whatever our area code is. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's gone from that to I am so proud to be a Samoan, you know, yeah. the humbleness of who I am, where I've come from, the roots of um, my parents, struggles that each of our parents as Samoans have taken and the paths that they've taken to actually better our lives by either coming to Australia or New Zealand. It's definitely changed how I look at, at being a Samoan. I'm definitely more cautious on the Samoan now. Mm. You know, I take so much pride in Samoa. Uh, whenever I can, I try and learn, you know, the, the Nganga Samoa. It definitely made me more aware of not only being a Samoan, but the whole culture and aspect of what you know our, our very being is you know what has no doubt your parents and your family your family's family even we are you've made so many people proud of what yeah. you've done and from someone that has known you from when you were so young <laughs> um, <laughs> I have truly truly witness a changed woman that really really loves her culture mm. And that, I always, I bite your ear off all the time, cuz, of our little discussions that we have, mm. uh, because I love to hear it. And the more and more I hear about it, the more prouder it makes me to know that I'm so proud of you. What we've heard today, you've surely touched the hearts of those that are maybe thinking of getting this done. And mm. you've also probably helped those prepare. And connect. And connect. Mm. And to let them know, man, this is just not a normal tattoo. Mm. This is a journey. Mm. And for that yeah. very reason, we just thought this was a topic that we had to get out there yeah. just to let people educate. know and educate them mm. of the beautiful culture that we have. You just have, <clears throat> in a few words, Kaz, just a little bit of advice to anyone. Yeah, look, my call out or my um, advice to young women um, contemplating and getting the malu. If you that's right and you understand the meaning of this la'e that you're about to wear, and by all means, embrace it. Definitely, in particular, to Australian New Zealand born, you know, those who haven't really grown up in Samoa, who don't know our heritage, um, because this is a heritage. As much as you know, you know, different nationalities have their own teachings, their own, you know, beliefs. This is our identity right here. Um, and if we can embrace it and we can stand the true meaning of what it is, mm. you know, don't second guess, but just just be mindful that when you do get it, there are responsibilities that come with it. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Love it. So to all our viewers, that's Monga Lee. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. That is Thanks, a guys. little bit of our culture that she's put in a nutshell. I hope you've enjoyed it. But before you go, guys, 
we do a game here to finish off our podcast called <laughs> the Top 10 Randoms. So we're going to give you some words and the first thing that pops into your head, okay? Yep. Isolation. COVID-19. 2020. Toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Bali. Good times. <laughs> Samoa. Malu. Yeah. Netflix. Movies. Yeah. Fog. People at our church jokes. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, Fob, yeah, uh, 100% Sam wants. Yeah. Fob food. Gallo. Gallo. Black Death. Exactly. <laughs> you know it, Cass. <laughs> Travel. Bali. Yeah. Bali. Music. Singing. And our last one, Cream. Sorry? <laughs> Cream. Cream. Prince. Yeah. Prince. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. It's been a pleasure. As we finish here on our podcast, we all say, Cheers! Yeah. <laughs> we love you! Love you, Thank you guys. Thank you. Hey, family. Thank you for watching our podcast series dropping every Monday. Please go and listen to all our other podcast channels on those descriptions right there. See you next time. Cheers.